I'm going to turn it over to Rod, who's going to show you how to make uh, one of the most popular flavors in the country right now, salted caramel. And I, I can't wait to try it. I'm excited. Rod has a very colorful history and a long history. Um, he's under an assumed name, the feds are looking for him. But uh, he really knows the flavor business and I think you're gonna get a kick out of hearing what he has to say. So I'll take a back seat and work for Rod for this next flavor. Oh, thanks, Steve. Well, uh, as you can see, Steve can never survive in corporate America. I'm pretty much the same. I don't play well in the sandbox with others, which is why when I left Oranger, which was my family's business, I joined another small family business called I Rice Company. Um, small family business, entrepreneurship is the way to go in my mind. Um, so I've been in this business uh, over, oh, if I tell you I'd be dating myself, wouldn't I? Over a year. <laughs> 30, 30 some odd years I've been in this business. Uh, my, my grandfather founded Oranger Manufacturing Company in 1918 selling flavors on a push cart in downtown Boston to confectioners. My father and my uncle uh, took the business over and uh, ran the business into the early 80s when I acquired the business. Uh, subsequently sold the business in the late 80s to Concord Foods. Uh, and then ran the Concord Foods Oranger division for 23 years. I left Concord Foods two and a half years ago and joined I Rice, a small family business out of Philadelphia. I Rice is renowned for their reputation in water ice bases. They basically invented water ice. If you go into Philadelphia, New York, New Jersey, everybody's selling water ice on every corner, as these gentlemen right here can substantiate. Uh, Water ice is a very simple product to make. It's a stabilization system, water, and flavor. That's it. Uh, the cost is minimal, profit margins are substantial. Uh, Steve loves the Italian ice and water ice business because uh, it's, it's keeping him afloat right now. Is it not, Steve? Well, it does uh, help pay for the Bentley and a few other things. <laughs> uh, the great thing about Italian ice, or you can tell Rod's got... Uh, some Philadelphia background because he calls it water ice. The thing about Italian ice, which we'll be making next, is it's just sugar, water, and flavor. It's so inexpensive that you can get yourself into business uh, for very little money, uh, which is fantastic. We'll talk about that on the ices, but here's your dairy product uh, that you're going to use. Uh, this is a blend that came from the dairy yesterday. It came out of the cow two days ago. It is milk, cream, and a secret ingredient, skim milk. Skim milk is heavy cream with all the fat removed. So it's heavy cream with all the good stuff still in it. So milk, cream, skim milk, and sugar are what's in here. And the uh, dairy went out to the farmers and said, we want all the stuff that you milk from the cows and um, we'll bring it back to the plant and our dairy scientists will separate it into milk, cream, skim milk, and then we'll re-blend it into this product. And it's always been refrigerated, it's, it's been handled by specialists, and it's put into these bags uh, called a bladder, and it's delivered to you refrigerated and fresh. And this is usually good for, for about 10 days to two weeks. Uh, because I'm doing these courses, I also freeze it. It freezes very well. And um, this is my fresh ingredients. We, I tell people, and I'm, I'll turn it back to you right away, but I tell people we make better gelato here in the United States than they can possibly make over in Italy. Because although the Italians would try to try to tell you differently, gelato is nothing more than milk, cream, skim milk, and sugar. That's what gelato is. It's a lower fat than what we're running. Even though what we're running here today under Jeff's guidance is the lowest fat content you can run in the United States and still legally call it ice cream because it makes a great product and we know what, what ice cream is all about is the flavor. But the Italians would have you use this. This is a bag of powder it's, and it's the same as this. The difference is there are no cows in Italy, dairy cows. There's beef cows but there's no dairy cows. The cows are on the pampas in Argentina. So in Argentina, they milk the cows, and then they take the dairy product, and they put it through a series of screens called a spray dryer, and they blow it through these screens and turn it into a powder. 
It's then shipped by the tanker load to Bologna, Italy, where they mix it together and they put it in these nice foil bags, ship it to the Port of Elizabeth, ship it to you in Akron, Ohio, and then you have to reconstitute it with uh, water to turn it into this. So that's why I can make the claim very easily that we make better gelato here in the United States than they do in Italy. Because do you want something that started off in Argentina and has done more traveling and seen more countries than I have, or something that came out of the cow two days ago? I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer. This is what I call fresh. You could make this on your own, um, but it gets complicated because you would go to the supermarket and buy it. And when you buy heavy cream in little containers like that, you're going to be paying a premium for it. Uh, also, the health department gets involved, as they always do, and uh, it just makes it more complicated when you can work with a, a fabulous product like this put together by dairy scientists. So it's all yours. I can't wait to try it. Thanks, Steve. What's, what's the uh, butterfat content of this mix? 10%. 10%. Yeah. Down Which here is... in Florida, we run low fat contents because if you eat ice cream when it's 100 degrees out and 100% humidity, you drop dead in the parking lot. And it really looks bad for business to have people <laughs> dropping dead in the parking lot. So by running a lower, because a high fat product, you eat a filet mignon at Ruth Christ in Tampa and then walk outside in the middle of August, you know, you're gonna drop dead there too. It's just too high fat for the body to take. It upsets your stomach. So down in the South, uh, Rod's from Boston. Down in the South, we run these low fat products. And uh, I can use that, by the way. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. It was bad enough that you said that my Thank hair you. looked grayer this time. But that's okay. It's all yours. Uh, so it's interesting that, um, you know, lower butterfat, of course, that makes sense. In the heat, you want, you want the lower butterfat. In the north, where they sell more ice cream per capita than anywhere else in the world, not, not, just, Matt, not just New England, but in Michigan and all across the north country, 14% butterfat is pretty much is the lowest Pretty much that they'll use up there. A lot of some people go to 18 percent. I myself find that 18 percent leaves too much of a, 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 a fat note in the back of your throat. So 14 percent is is a standard in the industry. But as Steve says, in the warmer weather, uh, 10 percent. Did you drain this? Yes. Are you sure? No. Good to check, huh? Should I drain it into the sieve? Maybe this will work. Okay. Let's double check. Yeah, she's drained. Is this closed? It's closed. Okay. Ready for takeoff. <clears throat> I'm just going to pour the mix in first and then, uh, then turn the barrel on. So this is uh, five quarts of 10% dairy mix. And you can get this anywhere in the country. A any major city has uh, a dairy blend like this. And we call it mix. Terrible term uh, because it sounds like a powder. You got to turn on the beater first. This is Steve's machine. I don't do equipment. I do flavors. <laughs> All right, so now we're freezing. Now you can add your flavor. No, you can start. Uh, you got to move quickly now. You got your refrigeration going. Right. So we're making a, a salted caramel, and what I'm using as the flavor base to this is a butter pecan base. Let me put this in here, and, and I'll talk to you about the flavor. Do you need any vanilla? I don't need any vanilla. Okay. This is a water-cooled machine. You have an engine in it, we call the compressor, and you have to cool the compressor. In your home refrigerator, you have a little teeny tiny 1 8 horsepower compressor, and it sucks in air from the front of your refrigerator and blows it out the back. You never notice it. We build these either air-cooled, like you see in the uh, CB350 and CB200, or in the bigger ones, we build them water-cooled or air-cooled. So right now, when the compressor went on, uh, and it started to warm up, it called for water. So we have a garden hose connected to it. It's circulating around the compressor, coming back and going over to the sink here. And then that water's thrown away. It sounds inefficient, but it's not. It's better if you can do it than uh, running it as an air-cooled and putting a lot of hot air into this room. 
because here in Florida, we don't want hot air in the room. We'd have to run our air conditioning, which is fossil fuel, and we'd have to run it longer and harder to remove the heat. Anything else going in there? Uh, not, no, there isn't. Okay. Uh, so what I use as a flavor base is uh, a butter pecan base. Uh, now, I rice is infamous for water ice flavors. Uh, water ice flavors are juice concentrates, flavor, sugar, water. Uh, since I joined the company, we've developed a line of ice cream ingredients. Uh, when I was with Oranger, we were probably had the most diversified uh, flavor ingredient line for ice cream in the United States. So my goal was to develop a line of ice cream ingredients uh, or a, a cut above what's going on in the industry today. Uh, one of the first products I came out with was this butter pecan base. So the name butter pecan on here is sort of a misnomer. This can be used in a multifunctional uh, aspect. The ingredients in this are brown sugar, water, sugar, molasses, non-fat milk, butter, natural flavors, and some stabilization. Okay, so even though it says butter pecan, what, what we're dealing with is a background flavor. So we put this flavor in, you can, now you can add uh, pecans to it, salted pecans, you can add almonds, have a butter almond ice cream, you can, you can actually have it as a butterscotch flavor. Okay. I'm using it as a background flavor for the hottest flavor in the industry today, which is salty caramel. The, I, I put it in a reduced level, uh, I put in 12, 12 fluid ounces to the, to the 5 quarts. Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking for is a mild background flavor, and then we're going to add some salty caramel variegate to this. And the, the variegate uh, is a new product for iRice. Okay. It's a, a, a highly, highly cooked uh, caramel. You'll see the color is very dark. You get some very strong milk and dairy notes out of it. And we've added uh, sea salt to it. So the flavor really jumps at you. And, and today, in the ice cream industry, um, the sweet and salt is, is what's infamous out there right now. So salty caramel is a flavor that started on the west coast and most flavor trends do start on the west coast. Um, C's candies developed a salty caramel about, I don't know, 12 years ago or so. And it was just a caramel coated in chocolate with sea salt on the top. Now, this trend, uh, every, all the confectioners are now making salty caramel, but this trend uh, articulated into uh, the bakery side and now into ice cream. So salted caramel is one of the preeminent flavors out there today. There are a number of different recipes. Um, my recipe is just a, a background flavor, whether it's this butter pecan or it's a, it, this is basically a butter molasses and dairy product. Uh, or you can use a caramel as a background flavor you can add salt into the mix if you want to. I'm just keeping this very simple. So, how long? Steve, 10 minutes on this? Uh, eight to 10 minutes, yeah. Uh, Rod, we got a note from the, uh, the fourth balcony tier from one of the seating hostesses, and she said they're having a little trouble hearing you in the back. If you could just speak up a little more. Hey, way out there. I, I have a very soft voice, even with this microphone. Yes. Yeah, we're going to get you a megaphone. I need a megaphone. <laughs> I have a very soft voice. I can hear myself, but I apologize for anyone that can't. If, if you can't hear me, just say, Rod, speak up. Um, Rod, speak up. Rod, speak up. <laughs> Again. Okay, when we pull this off, uh, we'll, 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 uh, we'll variegate the ice cream also, and I'm going to show you some tricks uh, to easy handling into variegating. Uh, and we're also going to fold in some chocolate chips. Oh, you're going to be busy. We're going to be busy. I want to show the people a little something about uh, refrigeration. Would you mind coming up for a second? We'll put you on camera. Uh, I want to, I'm going to go over here to the sink. And uh, Ken, if you can swing the camera around, we're going to go over here, Rod. Um, this, come on over here for a second. This is the water going in. So feel that. That's cold, right? If you can turn around for the camera. That's cold. Okay, now down there is where the water is coming out of the machine. And how does that feel? Warm. That's warm. Okay, that tells you that it's taking the heat out of the machine. Uh, so it's an easy way to test how your machine is running. If that was coming out super cold, it'd be using too much water. But more likely, if it came out real hot. That's not quite hot enough to take a shower in. But if it came out real hot, 
uh, then something is constricted. One of the hoses has got a bend in it and uh, it's eventually going to shut the machine off. So an easy way to tell that uh, your machine is running properly is check the warm water coming out. You're a pro. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Um, my very expensive timer. Yeah, let's give them a round. All right, thank you. Uh, my very expensive timer that my uh, the money honey, my bookkeeper gave me. Uh, I just set that for a general idea. I get talking and forget that I'm making ice cream. That is a criminal offense. When you're making ice cream, you are not talking on the phone to a friend. You are not uh, taking care of people out front. Uh, my friend Gary of Gary's Ice Cream up in Chelmsford, Mass, has a sign on his door that says, we all, we love you very much, go away, I'm making ice cream. And that's the attitude you have to take. This is your job for the next few hours, just like Sadie's is security, she's making sure that the ice cream's coming along fine, right girl? Um, well, so, Steve, Steve, I remember you saying that uh, you like to add particulates into your machine. Yeah. So if I had these chips in now, be beautiful, be perfect. Go for so it. So instead of folding these in, which was the way I learned before Steve's equipment was modified to the point that you can add particulate into the machine, I would hand fold it in. But I'm going to go with Steve's idea because go it's going it. to be easier when I variegate afterwards. If he drops any, you can't have it this time. No, I'm sorry. It's chocolate. Dogs can't eat chocolate. And we just want to make sure we get all the chips into the barrel. All of them, even that one that Sadie wants to have. <laughs> Those are semi-sweet. But you can use whatever you like. Chocolate is uh, very, and we have to, when someone asks a question, we have to repeat it. She asked, were they dark or semi-sweet? Uh, they're semi-sweet, and you can use anything you want. Chocolate is extremely subjective. Um, my wife Paula, who you met, uh, likes 85% uh, cocoa chocolate. I, I think it tastes like chalk. Uh, my idea of the dream chocolate is M&M's, so chocolate is a horse race, whatever, you, whatever it is you prefer. Question back there. The question is, what is the speed of the machine right now? I'm running at 170 RPMs, so I'm going to produce a super premium ice cream uh, of about a medium air content. Uh, if I took the speed up, I would get uh, uh, more ice cream with more air in it. Air is not a bad thing. And keep in mind, nobody ever walked out of an ice cream parlor and said, you know what, that's the best damn air content I ever ate. People don't do that. They say, that salted caramel was really great flavor. I loved it. So people eat flavor. But you can adjust with this machine and only this, these machines the air content that you want. To explain it very simply, imagine you had a bowl and you pour some cream in it and you have a whisk and you stir it with a whisk, it's going to remain cream. If you take an electric mixer and put it in there, boom, you've got whipped cream. The faster, more revolution per minute that you spin it, the more ice cream, uh, the more air you're going to get. Uh, and air is not a bad thing. It depends on the product you're using. If you're using a 10% like this, we like to cut down on the air. If you're using a 16%, we probably want a little more air. So let's just see how this looks. I'm going to open the gate and close it. I'm looking for it to cut off sharp like a knife went through it and it's not there. It's still oozing out. I only put the timer on, I didn't set it for any specific time, I just put it on to remind me that I'm making ice cream today. Um, I don't put a timer on the machine. I don't put gadgets on the machine because gadgets break and usually when you put them on they, they are tied into the controls and it takes down your whole, whole machine. If this gadget was to break, well, not this one, my bookkeeper gave it to me, but if this was just a cheap timer and it broke, I'd throw it away and I'd go buy a new one uh, for six bucks. And I'd put it right there and when the bell goes off, I'm over here, I'm not just standing here staring at it, that's what we do when it's new. I'm over here getting the flavor ready for the next batch, I'm getting the dairy ingredient uh, poured out, and then when the bell goes off, oh yeah, I got a couple of minutes to get back to the machine. On average, a batch takes about eight minutes to freeze, your first batch will take a little bit longer than your 15th batch. So if, if you were making 15 batches of vanilla, the first batch would be nine minutes, second batch would be eight minutes, the 14th batch would also be eight minutes because the barrel is cold. The more sugar we put into the product, sugar retards freezing. It takes longer to freeze a high sugar product. So Italian ice takes uh, longer than ice cream. 
So if Rod put a whole bunch of sugar in here in the form of the caramel, car caramel base, it would take a little longer to freeze than, say, a vanilla. Strawberry will take a little bit longer than vanilla. You just heard the machine, I don't know if you can hear it, the machine just got a little bit quieter. It was making a slapping noise against the wall. That's gone, and that product is starting to firm up. Now that's starting to cut off. We'll let it go probably another minute. Another minute? Yeah, and then it, it will be ready. The question is, can you do this same test for uh, gelato? Again, gelato is ice cream. The only difference between gelato and ice cream is we're making salted caramel, mint chip, Oreo cookie. The Italians are making tiramisu, hazelnut, fruit of Bosco. It's the only difference. They'd love to tell you there's a world of difference. There isn't. Uh, Italian ice, uh, not quite as much, but yes, you don't want a, a runny product. You want it to uh, be firm enough that when you put it into a bucket, it's not ready to put on a cone and hand to someone. But the, but the uh, vast majority of the uh, moisture in the product is taken out, and then you put it into your uh, serving freezer or your storage freezer, depending on when you're going to use it. So are you ready? Have you got your spatula? I am ready, Steve right. Thompson. You don't have to deal with the chips, so you don't have to be three-handed today. Thankfully, because this is a beautiful machine that will accept particulate into the barrel. Well, I taught you well. Yes. And it wasn't modified. It's been doing this since way before you were born, even though I know you were down around Ben Franklin. Just goes to show how long, how much I listen, Steve. <laughs> All right, turn off the refrigeration. We don't want any more chilling. Just push down on the blue button. There. And you're ready to take it out. Okay, to variegate, what I do is I'll pull off about a third of a bucket. Then I'll take some variegate and I'll coat the top. The next step, and this is, this is the trick to variegating, is I want to push the spatula down into the barrel and come straight across down and straight across. So I'm making a grid. Any more than this and you'll just get caramel ice cream. Okay, So three or four swipes going across each way so you're making a, a grid. Then I'll pull off another layer of ice cream. I'll add some more variegate and do the same thing. Remember, you don't want to push this all the way down. You want to push it about a quarter of the way into the, into the bucket. So three or four stripes going each way. And then on the top, the same thing. Straight down, straight down and across, straight down and across, turn the barrel, straight down and across. And then to make it look pretty, we just add a little bit to the top. And this is ready to go. Beautiful. We're going to have everybody come up and try it. I wanted to tell you one thing. When you are working with a variant like this uh, and you're new to it, you might use a little too much. You know, too much is not a problem running out is a problem. Now, if this comes in uh, a can, we call it a number 10 tin. It's a standard of the industry. If this comes in a can and we run out of variegate three quarters of the way through because we used a little too much, if we take our spatula and dip it into the can, we're now contaminating the can. We have to use it all today. So what you do for safety's sake is Rod measured out how much he wanted to use. I would also keep the can on the side open so that if I get to the point where I'm three quarters of the way there and I've just run out of the, uh, the, the butterscotch swirl or strawberry swirl, whatever I'm working with, I can go to my can, re-pour it in, and work from there. You don't want to take a dairy product and dip it into a can of product that you would be putting back in the refrigerator. You've contaminated it and bacteria will grow. So either you use it all up or you um, do my method of just setting it aside and have it. So what I'm doing here at the end is I'm just putting the, the edge of the spatula up against the blade just to draw out the final amount of product. It makes a little dam. 
the bulkier product comes out, if we were making vanilla, or when you see us make Italian ice, it's all going to come out in about 35 seconds. Um, when you're making ice cream, I've seen uh, new people make ice cream where they'll spend five minutes getting that last uh, three or four ounces out of the machine. It's a waste of your time. If you're making ice cream, you're probably going to do a second batch of this or a third batch, or you're going to go into a related product uh, instead of rinsing out the machine. You don't make chocolate and then rinse out the machine to make vanilla. You make vanilla, then you make chocolate next. Or you make vanilla and then strawberry, then Bordeaux cherry, then black raspberry. So any tiny bit that's left in the machine of strawberry is going to be covered over by the black raspberry. Uh, and it'll blend very nicely. The only exception to that is uh, rum raisin ice cream. Uh, as you know, I'm from the South Bronx. Uh, if you, uh, you have to rinse the machine and then have the bishop come in and bless it before you make anything after rum raisin because a New Yorker knows if you get so much as one raisin in the maple walnut, we know it's a bug. You know, and we don't want bugs in our ice cream. We don't want people being scared off that they, something just went squish that shouldn't go squish. So that worked out fine. Let's so give far. everybody a taste of that. And uh, then we're going to go on to the Italian ice. Can we make some room over here? Just slide some of this back. So come on up. And we'll give you a taste of this and see what you think. Rod is from the Irish Mafia side of Boston, so if you don't like it, it Don't. won't hurt his feelings. You'll just never get out of here alive. There you go. You know, it's funny, Rod, when we uh, start the day making ice cream, everybody's all excited. They say, oh, I'm getting free ice cream. Somewhere around 1.30, if I go, hey, you want to make another batch of ice cream? It's, oh, no, 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 no more. Because <laughs> we do fill them up. Yeah, there you go. I think I'll leave the spoons for you. You can all can grab your own spoon here. That might work a little faster. Thank you. And I will start rinsing this out so that we can make the Italian ice. No, the, we're going to do that in the afternoon. The Italian ice is next, okay. and then Rod will be free. Okay. Yeah, Rod has to go back to the cold this afternoon. Yeah. Come here, girl.